Okay, in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through two examples of ergonomic questions taken from past papers. Um, the reason I've chosen two examples is just to highlight that sometimes with ergonomics, uh, they will give you slightly different questions and you, you will be able to recognise the difference between the two questions um, as I talk you through them. So let's start with this first question here. Designers will have considered the range of design factors when designing the child's trike below. Describe how the use of anthropometric data has influenced the sizes of the trike. You should refer to specific data and parts of the trike in your answer. Now the first thing here that's important is that it's, this question is really just about anthropometrics. And it's, an, it's really important that you link the anthropometrics with particular aspects of this of the trike. And it tells you that here. It says you should refer to specific data and parts of the trike in your answer. So when we answer this, that's something that you need to remember to do in order to get four marks. So let's have a look at some of the statements that you could write down. We've got the first statement here. It says, the height of the seat should match the popliteal height of the child. So the height of the seat from there to the floor basically should be the popliteal height of the child. Now, the popliteal height is a technical word um, which represents the size from the top of your knee to the sole of your foot. And if you think about it, the child sitting on this trike, that's exactly the size that we need to determine the height of the chair uh, of the trike. Second statement says the distance of the seat to the pedals should match the length of the child's legs. So the distance from here to here should match the child, length of the child's legs. The width of the handlebars should match the shoulder widths of the child. The diameter of the handlebar should match the diameter of the child's grip. So we have four clear statements showing um, how these sizes would be determined using anthropometric data. So let's look at the second question. This question is slightly different. The main difference between this question and the previous one is that in this question, you need to also demonstrate knowledge of physiology and psychology, as well as anthropometrics. So what does it say? It says a smart wristband used when exercising is shown below. Describe the influence the following design factors have on this type of product. So we're going to look at ergonomics and you have to make four points to get four marks. So let's have a look at how you would answer this question. In this question, the first thing, as I've already explained, is that you want to apply or demonstrate your knowledge of the three categories um, associated with ergonomics, anthropometrics, physiology and psychology. So in the first um, paragraph here, it says anthropometrics is taking measurements from the human user. The designer will have had to use anthropometric data related to the user's wrist size. The 95 percentile person's wrist size will have determined the diameter of the wristband. Now, clearly, we've not got enough anthropometrics in this product, so we now need to um, consider the other two categories, including physiology and psychology. So the next paragraph is on physiology. And you will notice in each paragraph I've started with a definition of that category, and that's always a useful thing to do. So it says, physiology is concerned with the human systems. The wristband is likely to be worn for a long period of time, so it needs to be light enough so the humor doesn't become fatigued. The user will need to be able to read the display, so the size of the display is important. And these are all related to physiology. Um, and that's how the human systems interact with the product. And then finally, we've got psychology. Psychology is the mental reaction to a product. The wristband should feel nice to the touch. So in terms of texture, it should feel nice. The wristband should look good. So if these things are in place, then that will ensure that the wristband appeals to the human human user in terms of ergonomics. Okay, um, so that is 
should give you a flavour of how you would, uh, of what strategies you need to use in order to answer questions on ergonomics and your past papers. Okay, thank you for listening.